All right, so I'm really excited today to be with Stephen Porter. Uh, we've been together for some time now, interacting either on the phone or through email. We spend time on the weekends as well, either going through the book of Revelation or the book of Hebrews. Right now we're going through the book of Isaiah. And I've challenged many times people to tell their testimony and I'd be able to video record them and post it up just so that people can know the stories of how God is working in people's lives. And so a little while ago, Stephen Porter said, yes, I want to do that. And so here he is today. We're able to interact together now. And Stephen Porter, maybe you can do us the favor of sharing a little bit about your life, introducing yourself and, and how you had uh, been raised up as a Lutheran in a Protestant home. You, were, you ended up in the Marines. You actually ma have married two wives that have passed on. And now you're married to another wife that actually had two husbands that have passed on as well. So you guys have a huge history that have been, I'm sure you've been through a lot of joys and a lot of tears. And uh, yeah. then you were introduced to God. And so we'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Would you mind sharing? Not at all. That's why I'm here. I want to share. And uh, it's not going to be the testimony you're thinking of, uh, but it's still going to be a testimony. Well, first of all, my name is Steve Porter. I'm 72 years old. I live in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And I was asked to give my testimony from Daniel, uh, which after some thought, I figured with God working through me, I might do some good to, for others who have been or might be in the same situation I am in. And I believe the Lord gave me a thought and impressed upon me to write it down. And it just follows, and I'd like to start with this. It is good to do the right thing. The right thing usually is a good thing for someone else. If you see something that should be done, do it. Do it the right way. It takes no time to do it right. And if it does take time, so what? You did it right, and someone else can be blessed because of it. Amen. And with that in mind, I'd like to continue a little bit about myself. I was brought up in a Lutheran home in Minnesota. I went to church with my folks, attending Sunday school, and I loved Jesus. My first memories of Jesus was a little pamphlet I received, and it had the 23rd Psalm in it. I don't remember why or how it was given to me. I just remember the pamphlet. My sister reminds me that uh, we used to play church a lot. I don't remember that either, so I must have been too young for that. I think I was anywhere between. Yes, Daniel. <laughs> I'm just reminded of when I was, um, when my children were younger, my son and my daughter would also play church, and uh, my son would grab a Bible and he would call us to prayer, and then he would preach about how God is in heaven and how we need to turn from our sins and various things like that. So I'm sure you had a good time as a kid with your sister. <laughs> I'm sure we did too. Uh, my sister was a wonderful, uh, is a wonderful person. I had a step grandmother that ever so often I'd go over to her house and she'd had me read the Bible and she says, "See, someday you're going to be a preacher," and uh, I I always remembered that. Yeah, I, we used to play church, and I remember once on a Good Friday, I think I was seven or eight, nine, I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I had a watch, and I was looking at the time, and I made sure at three o'clock on the button that I went into a cross I had in my bedroom, and I prayed to Jesus, and I thanked him for dying for my sins. I just, that's the, really the very first thing. My mother used to be a Sunday school teacher too, and I, I remember ever so often going to her Sunday school class, but I don't remember much of the subjects and stuff like that. I just knew there were stories that they always told. Hmm. I grew up with wonderful parents. I had the best parents I think anybody could ask for. My mother and my father were just loving, caring, uh, religious people, they were the type of people that always wanted to do the right thing. They cared about everybody else, and they loved me, and I just loved them. Uh, my mother lived to be 103. And, wow. Uh, she, she, yeah, she was a matriarch and uh, uh, just a blessing to us all. Everybody loved my mother because she loved everybody. And uh, so anyways, as a teen, though, as I got to be a teenager, of course, stupid things happen to teenagers. And uh, I became one of those type of Christians that just go to church on Christmas and Easter. And that was about it. Yeah. When I was 22 years old, I got married and I joined the Marine Corps. As at that time, it was a military draft. Uh, I always said, well, 
why join the why go in the army? I'm going to be a marine, you know. Well, <laughs> you have to have intelligence at two points below plant life to join the Marine Corps. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I remember it, and I thank God that I went through it. But uh, uh, I should have joined the army anyway. Okay. In, in the Marine Corps, I met a chaplain there. His name was Chaplain Harold H. Essener, and. Uh, uh, he, he was the first Seventh-day Adventist I ever met. And, uh, and and my wife was also the same type of Christian I was. And so uh, things ran smooth, uh, religion-wise, between me and my first wife. Uh, had Harold Esslinger, he was a Navy chaplain. Long story short, he took me to the Revelation series that they had in Oceanside, California. Yeah. I saw the truth, and I just couldn't wait to tell my wife what she was missing. You can imagine how that went. Oh, no. Not well. I then became... Uh, what, C yeah, yes. what, what age were you at this time? Do you, do you recall? 23. Okay. It was 1971. All right. Okay. It was just that towards the end of the Vietnam War. Yes. Okay, there were people still going over to Vietnam, but there wasn't a big push to keep on sending people over. Mm -hmm. And so I had my wife down with me uh, in Oceanside in base housing. All right. And uh, when I went home and tried to tell her all this fabulous stuff I heard, she looked at me like I was peculiar. And uh, she wouldn't have anything of it. So uh, I then became that seed that was cast on the stony, pla on stony places. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure that my life with my wife was first. I told God that I still believed the truth, but I had to make sure things would be calm here first. Don't worry, God, I'll get back to you. Hmm. Fast forward 43 years and two wives. Because of some mental issues my first wife had, we ended up getting a divorce. Two years later, she died of an aortal aneurysm. Okay. My second wife died due to diabetes and alcoholism. God was still there. He waited for me. Amen. He was still there for me. I started going to the local SDA church every Sabbath. I had long talks with the minister. I knew that I would never leave God's side again. Nothing, absolutely nothing is going to pull me away. But something has changed. It's not the same SDA church it was 43 years ago. That's the Christmas. truth. Christmas. They're celebrating Christmas. The minister said, oh yeah, we found proof in Ethiopia from the first Jews there that showed us that it was okay or some other kind of nonsense. Well, I said, okay. <laughs> you know, a new truth. You know, between marriage number one and marriage number two, I'm regressing a little bit. I met a gal from Buffalo, New York, and we hit it off pretty good. Mm -hmm. But because of circumstances, we called it off after about two years, and uh, she went back to Buffalo, and after a while, I then I married my second wife. When my second wife passed, as I mentioned before, God is going to be my focus from here on out. Okay. During this time, I was reminiscing of old times and thought about my old girlfriend. I called her and left a message telling her I would like to talk to her if possible. I told her I was no longer married. A short time later, she returned my call, and we talked for quite a while, bringing up each other's, bring each other up on our lives. I could tell there was still something there between us. Hmm. And so I said to her that I am now a devoted Christian that I had God in my back, I had God in my backseat for these years, and that is no longer ever going to be the case again. I told her I was a Sabbath keeper, and I had beliefs that will not be changed to minimize God again. Amen. God, God bless you. <laughs> I had to, I had to say it, but I heard silence. But then she said with a trembling voice that she asked God not to send her any men again. If you do, dear Lord, she said, have him wear a sign around his neck that said, God sent me. Amen. She said she too is now a Christian, but she's not a Sabbath keeper. She is a free will Baptist. Okay. 
But she said, you go, go ahead with your uh, religion. Don't let me get in your way at all. And uh, for the most part, it has worked very good. Uh, I've done a lot of earnest praying, as you can imagine. But uh, uh, it, overall, it has been working. Okay. Uh, there's a story behind this as well, but uh, that's, I don't want to talk about that now. I moved to Buffalo, New York. We bought a home, and we furnished it with two households full of stuff, and we got married. I started attending Buffalo Suburban Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Lockport SDA Church. These are both in New York. The people there are precious, good people with love in their hearts. I felt at home hmm. in both places. Amen. During a Wednesday evening Bible study at the church, I met my next person who helped me to the right path that God wants me to walk. My brother, my best friend, and my mentor. I started going to his house for Bible study to help me remember the things I have forgotten over the course of now 45 to 46 years. The basics, the state of the dead, Sabbath, Bible truth, the three angels message, and so on. Mm -hmm. One Bible study night, he mentioned he had been studying something for about eight months. And he and his wife now believe it to be true, and he was fearful of sharing it with me. I told him he had nothing to fear. I loved him and his wife, his brother and sister. He asked me first if I could open my mind and some things, open my mind to some things and think about so think about it without prejudice. Okay. Take off my Trinity glasses and listen to what the Bible has to say. Wow. What I told him was Trinity. I grew up believing in the Trinity. That's how it is. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. It is our Lutheran creeds and songs. That chance, but go for it. Everybody, every religion believes in the triune God. That's right. And, you know, if, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm going to just mention that part of the problem is that we, as all, as you said, almost all religions believes in this triune God. You came to a point where you were challenged on that and you had to face either what you believed and what you've been taught or what the Bible says. So I'm really excited for you to be able to share more about that. So please continue. <laughs> Well, two hours later, just two hours, not eight months, like it took my mentor, two hours later, I was gobsmacked. I couldn't believe it. This was straight out of the Bible. No men's words, all of God's words, nothing from our prophet, Sister White. Hmm. This was straight from the Bible. Wow. I was now given my best divine friend, the Spirit of Christ. Amen. I was given the gift of open eyes. I was shown that there is one true God, and he has a son begotten in eternity past, also born as a human named Jesus, and he is the Christ. Amen. Then I heard the terrible truth about our beloved church. Sister White's warnings, Leroy, Leroy Froome, mm -hmm. the book called Questions on Doctrine, 1980 Dallas. I was devastated. My brothers and sisters at the two churches I have been attending are being led down an abyss. Wow. We need to help them out of that black watered swamp of filth that Satan is, are ready to drown us in. Now the next person God put in my life to help fight, to light the path of my journey, you, uh -oh. Daniel Mesa. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I am surely a blessed man to have these people in my life to help me along. This is God helping me through them that I might be able to cast my crown at the feet of our Savior and look upon the face of our Father and praise His holy name and thank Him for His love of us to sacrifice His only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Daniel has showed me more truth through the Scriptures than I was aware of. 
Daniel takes no credit for anything, save he is a tool of the Lord. He says, if you see something I don't see, please tell me. If I am wrong, correct me. I have taken the same attitude, saying, all I want is the truth, dear Lord. Just give it to me, and I will believe. Hallelujah. Now, as Paul Harvey used to say, here's the rest of the story. <laughs> Let me start out by saying is that I wish no one ill will. As God has loved me, I am to love others. Sinners, blasphemers, idolaters, spiritualists, and workers of Satan. God has also said in Ephesians 5.11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. Who am I to reprove anybody? I am as filthy rags. For some reason, I feel like I need to say something to my beloved friends in these two churches. There are lies being said without you knowing it. Hmm. First, let's see what Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have neither nothing and boast not, that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked? I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that, they may, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. Oh, I love that verse. Amen. To him that overcame will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Hmm. He that had an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. As I'm writing this, I'm sitting here wondering which direction I should go first. This is hard for me because I know this message will fall on deaf ears and be called nonsense. When God is with you, though, who can stand against you? Amen. Our beloved SDA church has fallen into apostasy. It is the Laodicean church. Yes. It's the prophecy we all know. The SDA church is in it. Read the Revelation, read the verses of Revelation 3:14 and on. That's you. Yeah. Christ is at your door. Let him in, please. Don't be afraid. The liars and the betrayers have already shown themselves. Elder Short, remember sitting in my living room and us dreaming about a day, how we could start our own church and how our pastor was leading us down such a dark path. We're even looking at possible buildings that we could buy. Two weeks later, you said you had changed your mind and now believe in the Trinity and you don't want to talk about it. Hmm. Then standing in the pulpit saying, we are crazy and why don't we just leave? The betrayal, the hurt, the lies. I still love you, Bob, and I pray for you and your family. We have no hate for you. Amen. I heard how the meeting that was held at the 
Buffalo Church to decide the fate of some of my friends firsthand. I also know that you, Elder Irwin, showed hate in your face and your voice when you told people to leave because they were not members of that church. Hmm. Hate from a person who called us brothers and sisters. Where is the love of God? Again, betrayal, hurt, lies, for you as well have stood at the pulpit and declared us sinners. Mm -hmm. Pastor Mancebo, the path you are leading the flock is not what the pioneers wanted. You are obeying the church manual instead of the Bible. Wow. Do you ever study it anymore? The Bible is plain, and it said that there is one true God and his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Have the Bible tell you what it says. Don't make it say what you want it to. Amen. When I first heard that you told the flock to just listen to you and elders and that you would tell them the truth, do you realize how much you sound like the Catholic Church? Wow. Implore your flock to seek out all things the Bible has to say without prejudice. They can't learn the truth with blinders. Their eyes must be open wide and their mind willing. Let them make up their mind. Hmm. You are trying to control them when God himself is reaching out to them. Amen. You are quoted as saying you will destroy the reputation of certain people. This is not the attitude of love. When you deny that Christ is the true Son of God and that he is not brought forth from the Father, as he himself has said, you are blaspheming against the Spirit of the Father and the Son. Hmm. I say this out of love, for Christ loves me, so I will love you with malice towards none. I pray for all the souls of the Buffalo Suburban SDA Church. Amen. I strong, strongly believe there are members of this suburban, suburban, Buffalo Suburban that believe the truth. I believe they want more of their loved members to see it. I know that my heart breaks for the friends I have made there. I have cried. There are no words to describe it. I pray for all of you, and I love you all, and I do miss you. Hmm. Time is short. I have things to say about the Lockport Church as well. Many people there are good, wholesome people who I have had the pleasure to meet. But your pastor is a liar. Wow. And one of your elders is a betrayer because this elder believed like he, if he believed, like he said he believed in the beginning, he would not have his position in the church now. He sold out. When having him repeat something, he said the pastor denied ever saying it. When asked to describe the three God theory, he could not. When asked to search the scriptures himself, he said he goes by the church manual. Hmm. The church manual is now your catechism. You have a creed. Does any of this sound familiar? The Lockport Church tried to stop the truth by closing down their radio program. That didn't go so well because it opened the door wider for those to hear the truth and it is still running strong. Amen. Mrs. White said that we are not to tell people of the SDA church to come out of Babylon. You are no longer the SDA church. You have given yourself to the world of sin. Make yourself fit into the world. You are no longer the remnant church. You are now a daughter of the whore. You are drinking from the wine of a wrath of her fornication. 
the corporate church is allowing women to be pastors and not calling homosexuals sin. They are meetings with the Catholic and Protestant churches. The SA church is no longer a peculiar people. Hmm. You're just like the rest of them. But it is not too late. Revelation 18, 4. And after these things, I saw another angel came down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, it's fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hole of every false spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice come from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, hmm. that ye not be partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Please, I beg you, come out of her. While in Sabbath school, and while studying the book of John, the subject of doctrine came up. The SDA manual is now your doctrine. The Bible is mine. Please show me where in the Bible the book that we love shows that there is a third deity that is called God. Explain to me with the Bible in hand, now believing that a third disembodied being that enters our hearts and minds and that it is not spiritualism. Hmm. Please show me where God the Father has said, I am my son and the son is not real. He is a lie. John 7, 15 through 18. And the Jews marvel, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but he that sent me. Amen. And if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his, his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Oh, how fitting for these times, the end times, the Bible, the Bible only, the Bible only. Now I sit here with the Bible in my right hand, and a facsimile of the church manual in my left hand. I reflect back to a wonderful sermon I heard on YouTube given by my friend Daniel Mesa. As Pilate said in front of all the Jews, who do you choose, Jesus or Barabbas? Hmm. The choice is yours. I pray you choose the Bible Amen. and the one true God and his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who sends his spirit to comfort and intercede for us. Amen. With this said, I renounce the corporate Seventh-day Adventist church. I believe they are an apostasy. Hmm. I believe they have left their first true love and now become one with the beast and the dragon. I cry for the people who are being led astray. I know what will happen to the pastors and the teachers that lead them on this path. I pray for them as well. Amen. It breaks our hearts to see all that God has given to us, and there are so few of us to respond to thank him. I will not wait for you to disfellowship me. I am coming out of Babylon. I will not drink of her sins and follow the wrong God. Hmm. 
I believe in the one true God and his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. I believe that the Holy Spirit is from the Father through the Son, as he has proclaimed that everything he does is, comes from the Father, and he does it because of his trust and his love he has for his Father. There is still the truth that we love you, and we pray for you. And we pray that you will study the Bible on your own. See it for yourself. It's Amen. there. Amen. God has made it plain. I implore you not to take my word for it. Do not take the pastor's word or any of the elders' word for it. You are in control of your own destiny by the choices you make. Mm -hmm. Do not leave these choices up to someone else. Open the Bible. Study if you don't know where to look in the Bible, Daniel or myself can give you a list of Bible verses to look at. Nothing but Bible verses. I then want you to go to your pastors or your elders and have them give you Bible-only Bible passages of the Bible showing that there is a trinity. When given the 7th and 8th verses of First John chapter 5, Look into its history. You will see that the SDA church corporate in the past has said that because of the interpreter and how he came upon these verses was so suspect that they do not think they should be included in the Bible. Please look up comma Johannineum. Is that how you pronounce that, Pastor? Yeah, it's actually Johannian comma. Yeah, so, so John wrote it, Johannian. And it's the coma, which is like a, a, an addition or some kind of um, notes that was on the side. It's actually First John chapter five, verse seven, and part of verse eight specifically. Okay. And uh, yes, I said, do not take my word for it. Take the words word for it. Amen. You will see the truth. He doesn't hide it. Then you can worship the right God on the right day and be blessed and be that peculiar people again. Amen. I have a postscript. In the last two days, I have learned two other things that has shocked me. One, a professor slash minister in an SDA university had declared that Jesus is not the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Two, an elder at the Buffalo Church, not before mentioned, has said that Jesus didn't die. Very common, yeah. The first thought I had was, if these things are true, taken from the first prophecy in Genesis, to the last prophecy in Revelation, and everything in between is a lie. If there was no God to give us his son to take on the sin of the world, and if there was, he didn't die anyway, what are we left with? There is no gospel. That is all I dare say. I want to keep this message full of love and forgiveness. I want to thank you and just say again, please come out of her. Please. Thank you, Dan. Hey, I really appreciate it. You know, I, I wanted to um, a few times interrupt and say something, but I'm just glad that I kept quiet and allowed you to just pour out your heart in um, love and warning to these people. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a, a moment to speak a little bit. You know, right answer. we are told that uh, we are never to call the Seventh-day Adventist Church Babylon. And you referred to that in your comments, and I appreciated that. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is not Babylon. But let me clarify, the original Seventh-day Adventist Church is not Babylon. Since Correct. then, with the changes, as was mentioned, with Froome and the coming out of the Comforter, written in the 1928 and published and sent to all the seminaries, which led to, finally, the 57 book Questions on Doctrine that was published and then going into the 70s, the late 70s, with 
the whole Ford crisis in the 1980 officially voting that the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church now had a different God being the Trinity, something that they had never had before officially. It crept in in 1931, you can see, and there was 1913 a couple times in the Review and Herald and different things like that. But it was a slow process that led them into worshiping the same God, the same God that the Catholics worship, Methodists, Lutherans, Episcopalians, Baptists, all over the world people are worshiping what I consider the ecumenical cornerstone, which is the Trinity. And so this is what Brother uh, Stephen Porter is calling people away from, is the new Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's not something that is the original that, that Sister White said, you cannot call Babylon. We don't call that one Babylon. That, that's the true church. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to be a part of, is that original Seventh-day Adventist Church, which held the fundamental principles from 72, 1872 or 1889. Those are beautiful truths that are declaring what God gave to his people during that time and wants to move forward in through this Philadelphian time, even during through that Laodicean time. Now, I just wanted to clarify that it is clear in the Laodicean message, which Brother Stephen Bohr aptly put it, is applicable to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, that one of the major, one of the major problems with that message is that it is not understood that Jesus Christ is outside of the church and he's knocking on the door trying to get in. That's the problem is there is another spirit in the church. What spirit is it? It's the spirit of Antichrist. You can see in 1 John chapter 2 verses 22 and 23, if you deny the Father and the Son, you have the spirit of Antichrist. And so the Son is outside the, church, the Laodicean church and we're calling people to allow the Spirit of Christ to come into the heart or mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, Brother Stephen Porter, I really appreciate your comments and your, your uh, desire to share, your, your passion to have these people study for themselves. And now, <clears throat> you had made it clear you want the Bible to speak and the Bible only. And that's good. I appreciate that. Now, that does not mean for me or you, I, I know you, so I, I understand this. It doesn't mean that we should push away the writings of Sister White. Okay. What it means Heaven's is, soul. yeah, no, 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 not at all. What it means is we are supposed to have the Bible as our foundation. And when the Bible is our foundation, then we're able to see that all of Sister White's writings are completely synced together with those writings, right? And so we don't have... Sister White saying this thing and the Bible saying this thing. No, they, they do say what is the same, and we appreciate that. So, But your appeal for the Bible and the Bible only is what I would ask for them as well. So I actually have 50 Bible questions about the Trinity that I'm going to put up here, and I'm challenging every one of your friends in New York and, and elsewhere to go through that series. To It's only two parts, and I go through 50 questions, and uh, I, I use the Bible to try to understand what the Bible does say about the Father, what it does say about the Son, and what it does and doesn't say also about the Trinity. So I appeal for anybody to watch that, and I'm going to include that link in the uh, description. And so, um, yeah, thank you, brother. I really appreciate your, your passion and your, your love for this people. Is there anything else you'd like to say in closing? Just a couple little things, or well, maybe just one, because uh, I'm very singular. <laughs> uh, it's great to be the peculiar people again. Amen. Uh, because now they are looking out at us as being peculiar yeah. because they no longer are. They're just one of the crowd. Yeah. They're just one of many. They fit in now. They have they have the comfort of being part of the world. Yeah. Where uh, I enjoy being peculiar. Amen. <laughs> That's Amen. good. And so come out of her, my people. Come out of false doctrine. Amen. And uh, mm -hmm. in the great controversy, we can read very clearly that Babylon is the mother of harlots. And those daughters are those that used to have the truth and have given up that truth to follow along in the ways of the world. And so that, that church, that, that daughter that used to have the truth that has left that truth and is now one of the daughters 
is what we're calling you out of to go back to that peculiar people that hold the truth that is very different from that of the world. And so, um, Brother Stephen, would you please pray asking God's blessings upon those that are listening, those that have made it this far in this presentation? May they be blessed and uh, may they be appealed to by your prayer. I would be more than happy to. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Dear beloved Father in heaven, hear our prayer. Dear Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the words you have put in my mouth. I pray, dear Father, that people that have listened to it can understand. People will turn to your word and study it and get to know you better. Dear Father, we have found that there is no mystery if there is no Trinity. Hmm. Everything is laid in front of us. You are God the Father, and in times past, you begotten your Son from yourself. And after man's sin, you promised that you will send your Son, hmm. and he agreed because of his love for you, and he was born human, and his name was Jesus, and he is the anointed one, the Christ, and he died for our sins. Amen. This is what we believe. With that, there is no mystery. And we also know that when he went to heaven after his death, he was allowed to have his spirit then be with us. He said, I will not leave you. I will always be with you. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of Christ is sent to our minds. And we know now that the angels are doing it because Jesus said, sends his character, his thoughts, and his comfort, and his blessings to the agency of angels. Amen. The Bible tells us that. Mrs. White does too. We thank you, dear Father. Please let our friends and all the loved ones from all of our churches, not just from the Buffalo and the Lockport Church, but from every Seventh-day Adventist corporate church who happen to hear this, have them study your word. Don't take my word for it. Have them take your word for it, because your word is truth. Hmm. I ask this in your son's holy name. Amen.